20 years of living in the diaspora and she has not even saved a cent for herself because of the way the conditions are most of her money goes to rent transport and then also it goes to the school fees the food and everything their money combined can never be saved what's happening right now she's asking me if i can help her with the plot and uh also at the same time she's looking for something that is just not going to put her into shame because she does not have money to build right away while so many south africans especially black south africans living in the rural areas are enjoying the liberty of building beautiful homes beautiful mansions in their tribal land there are so many South Africans that are outside of South Africa who have been living abroad and are desperate to come back home and also get access to this land, but they are unable to do so. Today, I'm going to be talking about that. We are going to discuss those South Africans that are living in the diaspora who are unable to come back home and enjoy the freedom of building in their ancestral land. I'm talking about the South Africans who grew up in the rural areas who are longing to come back to the rural areas but there are so many hardships that they had to face overseas and now they are struggling to find ways to come back home. One letter sent to my email broke my heart and I'm going to be talking about that before we get into that story, I just need to go get my visa at the American Consulate and buy food so that I can cook. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you for tuning in. My name is Veli Le, I am a lifestyle blogger from South Africa. If you're new on this channel, you are very much welcome. And please do not forget to subscribe, like, share and comment on this video. Guys, I had to quickly come to the store so that I can buy things that I'm going to use for cooking in the evening. I really need to cook because I do have special visitors that are coming and I need to feed people. We are going to get to the story because it is so heartbreaking for me to hear that when we are showcasing these beautiful homes that people are building in the rural areas in South Africa, boasting about how people have improved the rural areas of South Africa and how black South Africans post-apartheid have managed to just really gun for everything that they've wanted to achieve pre-apartheid, during apartheid and now they have access to their ancestral land and they are just really investing into their tribal land, building beautiful homes, improving the economy, building malls I never thought there would be malls in South Africa that are black owned, but they are in the rural areas for that matter. There are people who watch this channel on a daily basis and they are living in the diaspora. They left South Africa during apartheid and some of them post apartheid when they were given opportunities to go and work overseas. Most of them they have worked for more than two decades, even more than that in the diaspora. But they are really longing to come back home. Some of them grew up in the rural areas. When they see what I showcase on this channel, they are always saying, Velile, we want to come back home. There are so many things that are blocking them from coming back home. It has nothing to do with visas. It has nothing to do with anything, but it has something to do with money. It has something to do with employment back at home and also being able to achieve what they would like to achieve at home. But it is worse when people cannot even manage to come back home because they have never saved a legal cent while they are still they were still living in the diaspora. The story that I'm going to be sharing with you today, I spoke to the person who sent a letter to me on email and I said I would like to share your story without even having to reveal your name to everybody else and who you are and where you're staying right at the moment. But I will just indicate where you are in the diaspora and also share the story so that it can educate other people. That is the story that I'm going to share you. It's very sad. I was so heartbroken when I heard the story. I wish I could do anything to be able to help this family but so far this is why we are just going to take it. The only thing that I can do on this channel is to advise, probably give some ideas, and that's what I'm going to give 
people who are probably in the very same situation as, as this family maybe they will gain something because i'm just going to give you tips of how probably you can navigate around this whole issue of trying to get land and trying to build back in in south africa while you are still in the diaspora working again guys please don't forget to like subscribe share and comment on this video i really appreciate that also if you appreciate this video and you would like to donate anything to this channel there is a thank you button just there next underneath the video somewhere where there is share comment and all of those things there is a thank you button you can click over there and then it should take you to the amount that you probably can just donate into this channel click on any from one dollar to ten dollars it really doesn't matter as long as you show your appreciation the way you would like to appreciate this channel i really appreciate you also for doing that and also for the african americans who are willing to come to south africa and enjoy a good tour with me i've been hearing you guys and i'm putting that into action i'll be sharing a link on the next videos that are going to be coming i'm going to be introducing what i will be doing on this channel also as a person how i'm going to be going about doing all of those things that you guys have been asking me to do since i've started this channel so now when you're coming to south africa you are going to be meeting with me face and i'm going to help you explore south africa in the best way possible talking about investments where you can invest talking about you understanding south africa so that when you are working and doing any business with south africa and south africans you understand exactly whom you are dealing with and how you can work with them so that is just going to be coming up i mean this year is just going to be full of so many things that are just so empowering now we are moving from just talking 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 and showcasing we are getting into action right now so i'm ready guys i'm going to be doing that this year again guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up just press that like button if you like the video you will be encouraging youtube to recommend this video to so many other people so that we can really take the views to the level where we want to share the south african story to any other people who like to visit our country let's just spread the south african flag to the world and let people get to know south africa the way we would like them to get to know south africa so i am the ambassador of south africa i have appointed myself as a citizen of south africa to make sure that the world knows the best 
and the best of what south africa is capable of doing so do the same if you're a south african and you are watching this video please do share this video to other people so that you can spread the word to so many other people also if you do have relatives that are in the diaspora and they are south africans and also are struggling to get back to south africa because they have so many hardships especially financial problems please just make sure that you share this video because it's going to enlighten them also and give them an insight of the other ways to do some other people have forgotten how we used to do things in south africa to make money so now we can really enlighten each other and help each other to go back into those old traditional ways of just gathering together and making sure that we help we help each other so let's just do that just going to finish cooking right now i'm on the last leg of cooking guys and then we get into the story because the story is really very emotional but at the same time very educational and it is going to open your eyes if you are living in the diaspora and you are a south african who wants to come back to south africa you if your issue is not just the visa issue or anything else paperwork or anything else it's a matter of you coming back home and starting your dream but you do not know where to start you are on the right channel right now we are going to be talking about that
late guys oh guys i just came out of dhl if you watched uh, the last video you will notice that i went to american uh consulate here in Santin to apply and renew my visa so i've just collected the visa right now and i'm here and i thought i should share something that really broke my heart but at the same time i felt like it needs to be communicated here on this channel because it's it's going to help other people because there are so many people who are in the very same situation but uh they never got to email me like the person who emailed me uh, uh last week i got an email from one of you guys one of the subscribers uh who had uh, a very big concern about herself and her family because they've been wanting to come back home but they are sort of like embarrassed at this point to come back home because they literally have nothing to put into a home that they can buy in south africa or even uh, a land or do anything this lady grew up in the rural areas in peter Marisberg. she has been living in the uk in london for a long time close to 20 years she has two children and a husband husband didn't grow up in the rural areas but um when they met uh they were already adults she has a degree she went to do nursing in the uk and along the lines years passed she uh, even lost the job that she used to have and then she got another job that didn't pay her the money that was initially paid by the other job the job that she took when she left south africa 20 years of living in the diaspora and she has not even saved a cent for herself because of the way the conditions are most of her money goes to rent transport and then also it goes to the school fees the food and everything their money combined can never be saved and she's just wondering if i can help her to get a plot here in south africa in the rural areas especially in peter Marisberg, closer to where she grew up because she feels like she cannot go back to the uh, to the land that was left by her parents uh, at the moment because uh, her uncles have occupied that land and also at the same time she cannot ask them to find her land that is closer to them because of family issues so she's looking for uh, land in another rural areas uh, where she can just find peace build there and then she can just live her life with her children and her husband because her husband obviously is not a person who grew up in the rural areas he has found find it difficult over the years to grow to go back to the rural areas but now he is just warming up to the idea and she's very happy about that so what's happening right now she's asking me if i can help her with the plot and uh also at the same time she's looking for something that is just not going to put her into shame because she does not have money to build right away so i had to uh suggest so many other things guys it's getting hot i just want to sh uh, also change my hand because i'm getting very tired holding the camera on this side so i'm just gonna change it and put it on the other side just hold on for a moment here are her problems she doesn't have money it's becoming very difficult for her to um save money in the uk because when she came to the uk she thought she was going to make a lot of money and even buy a home back in south africa even in the suburban areas because that's what she was looking at uh two years down the line after she arrived in the uk close to i think it's over 20 years now she's still wishing to buy a house in south africa and she can't do that she has been unable to save because number one the salary that she has been getting it has been going to the um accommodation where she stays she's been renting a flat all along in the uk and also the car that they bought and then they've paid off the car she said but now the kids at school and with the one going to university is even getting much more tougher and tougher so she's been basically living from uh, hand to mouth and it has been very difficult for her to even save a cent while she's in the uk 
I replied to her. I told her, I said, you know what? There are so many cases like that. I've heard of those stories. Uh, it's not the first one. But now, where do we start from here? Because, you know, growing up in the village, it's not easy to go back home when you've been married and you're coming empty handed and you're living with your parents. Because she said most of her relatives are still there, but she's very much ashamed of coming without anything or having money to start building something. So she wants to go to a separate village where she's going to be given enough time. Once she, once she gets the blood, at least she can be given enough time to, to build without anyone looking at her. Those kinds of things, they happen to everybody else, even us who are living here in South Africa. When you go and uh, go back to the village and you're starting to build a house, you tell yourself your mind that you know you want to build now and you want to finish now but uh, to tell you the truth people in the villages are not looking at that they are not looking at when you are going to finish uh, they are just proud and happy that you are just part of them especially once they have accepted you as one of the people who can be part of the community so for me i had to just tell her straight and i'm telling those who probably are in the very same situation that it is never too late uh to even start right now whether you do have money or you don't i know before you know we used to have stock files where you can just with a bunch of friends put money together and put it out in the bank and then take it out later it was the best way to uh um discipline yourself to invest or to even save money i don't know about people who are in the diaspora because you know whom are you going to be having a stock fell for building the house even if it's not a stock fell for building the house but it's a stock fell to save money that you can pull out maybe by december so that you can really put it into something that you really want to invest into whether building a home or buying a car or doing whatever like every other south africans are doing but it's very impossible so most of the people really feel lonely when they are outside of south africa it's becoming difficult for them to even achieve the dreams that most of the south africans who are already inside in south africa are achieving right now building beautiful homes in the rural areas as we have shown you guys on this channel so i just want to uh say i really think it's very possible the fact that you have decided in your mind that you want to go back home you want to give your children something like that you want to invest back home it is the start because you're still a south african citizen and you probably have more um advantage than the other uh, south africans that are living here there is itala bank that gives personal loans to people and uh, for them to start building their homes. They are personal loans, they are not uh, uh, property loans or bonds uh, that are attached to the house, but they are personal loans, so it depends on your income every month, how much you are earning, where you are working, and is it a cons consistent uh, type of work where you are, you've been working for a long time and you are still going to carry on working there. So those kinds of opportunities are there. That's one. I'm not encouraging people to go and borrow money from the banks. But sometimes when you have not been able to save and you have a dream, you can start from there because it's still another way of investing back into yourself and disciplining yourself to save that money to pay the bank back on that personal loan. So that is just one thing. And then also I've mentioned the stock files. If you are probably living in the diaspora and there are people that you trust back in the at home and you want to find a way of uh, saving money, you are sitting with pounds on that side. If you convert just legal pounds into rands, they make big rands. You can even invest that into a stock file with your family back here at home. And then you can collect and start collecting bricks, uh, you know, your roof, your everything that you're going to need to build that structure. That is another opportunity uh, that is at your disposal. Probably you have never thought of just because, you know, no one, there's no one to talk to, but I'm here. I'm, I mean, like there are so many ways you can be able to just start right now and put uh, that money aside. Uh, you know, having to live in a place like UK 
it gives you an advantage more than the south africans in terms of the value of the money that you are carrying i mean like a pound it's far greater i think it's over 20 rand so imagine if you start now and save just 500 rand or 1000 rand how much is 1000 rand compared to the pound that you have and then the third thing also that people never think of is probably to just like really just start with the land come home find the land look at the land secure it and just leave it there that land will always be there and then you can start saving from our from your side in any other way but as long as you have land it is the start i hope this helps if you do have any suggestion please comment down below and advise her of what she can do right now thank you so much guys thank you for tuning in thank you for watching this video and also thank you for your support until the next video bye bye